of your power. Or if he can get you to doubt whether you are in the perfect will of God, then it won't be long until your vision is changed. And other times he will try like the fox that spoils the vine. If he can't get you to come out of your tower one way, he'll try another. He'll come at you from the standpoint on your own pride because you see the accolades of men to those churches who are doing great works but whose vision is so very different from yours. He'll come at your, you from the standpoint of your own need and desire to see church grow when your finances are low and you are limited in your ability to reach out to the lost the way that you want to. Then Satan will show you that other churches can do it because they follow a different vision. Huh? But what I must say when I see these things, huh? what answer can I give when I am confronted huh? with the attacks of the enemy huh? that try to destroy the vision huh? that God has placed within me? Huh? Write the vision huh? and make it plain. Huh? The way that I'm back to say it. Huh? Write it down. Huh? Just commit it to memory. It pays to write it down. Write the vision down of what God tells you to memory. It pays to write it down. Ah, that when God tells you to do something, you can read it again. You ain't hearing me. It pays to write it down so they all can see what the ultimate purpose and goal is for the church. Uh, write it down uh, uh -huh. and post it in every place of prominence uh, where every member of the church, uh, where every preacher, uh, where every youth uh, can see your purpose. Uh, where are we going? Uh, do we believe in? Uh, you ain't hearing me. Uh, what purpose is there uh, for us to be where we are? Uh, why do we invest money. What is our duty in serving the Lord? Yes. Who are we here to please? When we write down the vision, when we make it plain, when we begin to wonder where we are going, we can read that vision. Hallelujah. When we can decide whether to do one thing or another, that vision statement keep us focused yes. on the right path. Uh -huh. It's not enough to just preach it yes. or say it again and again. Right. It must be written down. Yes. And if God thought that it was important enough to have his words written down as a permanent guide for all time, for all men, and not just to commit it to memory. Reminded yeah. of that through our vision statement. Uh -huh. was a man who was searching for the truth and had 
have somehow come to know about Jesus and embrace that truth. His, his whole house was doing their best to live for God, but his vision was limited because of the lack of knowledge. And in that vision, he was told to send for a man named Peter, a Jew and a man who was known for his indecision about certain things of the law even while he served Christ. And if you remember the story from Galatians chapter in, uh, uh, you, you, you will find uh, that Peter was being wishy-washy uh, in his convictions. Uh, he had an attitude like many of us have. Uh, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Uh, and when Peter was with the Gentiles, uh, he ate with them and fellowship with them. Uh, but when the Jews came around, uh, he quit associating with the Gentiles uh, so that he could appear to be a good Jew uh, who followed the law. Uh, his actions caused others uh, to copy him and brought division uh, in the church, uh, even causing another disciple named Barnabas uh, to fall into the trap of being hypocritical. Uh, the problem was that Peter wanted to be accepted uh, by the Jews, uh, the legalistic law, uh, a bargaining people that he had always known. Uh, so he began to take on their vision uh, and change his preaching uh, by teaching that the Gentiles had to obey the law as well. Uh, he became a man with a short-sighted vision, uh, not deserting the God desire uh, to bring the Gentiles into his kingdom as well. Uh, Paul rebuked him uh, for his hypocritical ways uh, and demanded that the gospel should be preached, uh, saved for all. Uh, but Peter was hard-headed uh, and God had to give him a new vision uh, before he could become the man of God uh, that God intended him to be. Uh, and as the servant of Cornelius uh, came nearer, uh, God began to birth within Peter uh, a vision that would give him the mind of Christ. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, and the Bible is on the morrow uh, as they went on their journey. Uh, and drew nigh unto the city. Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and he saw heaven opened up and a certain vessel descending unto him. And it had been uh, an open sheet, uh, a great sheet knit uh, at the four corners uh, and let down to the earth, uh, wherein all manner uh, of four-footed beasts uh, on the earth, uh, and wild beasts and creeping things, uh, and fowls of the air. Uh, and there came a voice to him, uh, rise, Peter, kill and eat. Uh, but Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time. What God had cleansed, that call thou, not call thou common. This was done three times, and the vessel was received up again. It was getting close to the time of the evening meal and one of the customs of the Jews was not to eat but to fast before the evening meal. It was about that same time as evening sacrifice in the temple. If you want to have a true vision that comes from the mind of God, you need to find a place where you can get alone with God. It will take some prayer and take some fasting to get yourself to the place where God can speak to you. It might take some time. God will always move or speak quickly. And Peter had been there for a while because he became hungry. And God was birthing within Peter a desire for the reality of God in his life. Peter became physically hungry, but he was spiritually hungry as well. And I'm finding out uh, that people go through the motions, uh, but they're really spiritually hungry. 